it's quiet around here again. Nobody wants to talk anymore at the dinner table or have fun family days in the living room with Monopoly money littering the floors. Everything is dreary and dull, lacking in high spirit. It's disappointing to witness the change within the atmosphere of what I'm forced to call home. Everyone seems to be emotionally detached, walking around resembling living zombies. My own brother and sister avoid one another as they walk down the halls of our home, glancing abruptly in the other direction should they make eye contact. I haven't had a conversation with anyone within the house in days, and there's only one thing to blame for this. Before the visit, everything was perfect. My siblings had their friends over daily, munching on delicious pizza, watching movies all night, and indulging in bountiful amounts of candy. Sadly, there is no more candy, pizza, or friendly visits. Every shred of happiness has been ripped violently apart, charred in the fire of destruction. Our years of happiness, our cheerful laughs, have all dissipated from thought. In place of happiness was our uncle. His visits are always unwanted, though I tell myself that the visits are temporary. I can't help but remember the last time he showed up at our doorstep. Though he is family, though he is a part of us, no one can really stand him. Still, we endure him as best we can, abiding by his strict rules and policies. Just as us children have done, my parents abide by his orders without exception. I have to tell myself that every family has an uncle that never seems to fit in with the rest. I have to tell myself that uncle is part of our bloodline, eliminating any hatred of him from my thoughts. But it's so damn hard. I mean, if you knew what he does to us, it's just not right. As I sit across from him now, watching on as my mother prepares our dinner, I can't help but want to lunge across the table, grabbing a hold of whatever I can to use on him. His expression alone is enraging. Though everyone else is terrified of his devious smirk, I want nothing more than to rip it off whatever it is he calls a face. But as my mother approaches the table with the steaming pot in hand, my eyes glance towards the kitchen she derived from. Like every visit from Uncle, the countertops are stained red, oozing crimson remains on the floor. Though my eyes know not to look further, I can't resist the urge to. There, dangling lifeless off the cutting board, are my friend's legs. I try to hold back the tears as my uncle looks upon me, his glare burning through my skin. Somehow, I manage to suck the tears back as my mother spoons Alexandria soup into the bowl placed before me. Eat, uncle says. I glare down at the bowl, catching a glimpse of what appears to be a tongue within the browned concoction. Immediately, I get the urge to vomit, but I swallow it down, erasing all traces of fear from my mind. Eat, he repeated. From my peripheral, I can see my mother's horrified expression. Her head nods frantically, as if to insist I correspond with the uncle's twisted rule. I shake my head in refusal, standing abruptly as I throw the bowl into the wall where uncle had stood milliseconds prior. It didn't take long for me to feel the hot breath upon my neck. It didn't take long for those freezing hands to wrap ever so delicately around my neck. It didn't take long for my lungs to struggle for the smallest fraction of air. You. Will. Eat. Uncle mutters, licking my face with his sandpapery tongue. The satisfaction I'm giving Uncle is not what I want. I can't allow him to feast on my fears, my tears, or my pain any longer. So I tap out, patting his leather-like skin aggressively. 
Immediately, his grip lessens, and I can once again breathe. Almost instinctively, my mother fills another bowl of my friend and places it before me. Once the bowl is stationed within its rightful place, my mother takes her seat and begins eating. Though I want to escape, I know there is no escaping my uncle. My late brother attempted that, and he took the place of our friend at the family dinner. So instead of drawing out my own demise, I sit down, pick up my spoon, and begin to eat. There is no escaping uncle. Uncle controls us, feeding on what remains of our sanity with each visit. Uncle is us.